Morning chaps, welcome along to the vlog. Well, actually, it's the uh, brew stand build tutorial videos, which are gonna be part of the vlog for now. But anyway, I'm not gonna waffle on. To keep the video short and sweet and to the point, so anybody else doing something similar to this can kind of follow along, we're gonna get straight into it. So let's flip the camera around and we'll talk about stage two, which is moving on from yesterday's build, which were the pot slings. So as I said, yesterday's build consisted of making the, the base plates for the pots to sit on, the bottom of the slings. Now what we need to do is build the uprights which support the base plate and from which the retaining bands are mounted. And also, here's a close up, this is the pivot assembly. So you have two pivots on the base, one to tilt your pot slightly forward on the kettle, not so much on the mash tun, to enable you to maximise the amount of work you're getting from the kettle or reduce dead space. And then this top pivot here is when you're going to tilt your pot all the way back to empty out your spent grain and trub. So I've measured up on uh, my particular tanks and the height from the bottom of the sling, if you like, to the bottom of this band uh, to avoid everything on the front of the pots, such as outlets and temp dials, we're going to look for a height of 210mm to the bottom of that band. That band is also 50mm wide, we're going to use a piece of steel which I've got up here. Uh, so that gives us 260. Therefore, we need to cut a piece of angle iron because uh, the supports, it's difficult to see, but I have got quite a few pieces of paper to let me know. This is probably the best one to look at. That there is actually angle iron. Is that the best place to look at it? Maybe this one. So if I kind of zoom in a little bit, this section here, that's angle iron running up the side of the pot there and it goes right up to the bottom of that band but we need to be able to mount everything on it so looking at this picture it looks like the apex of that would be to the top of the band if you see where it's coming up and then what they've done is they've notched out and around the mounting bracket so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take the angle iron on both sides up to the top, meaning that we can cut away to give a decent mounting section on the angle for these carrier plates, these carrier, these half semicircle cutouts. Uh, whereas otherwise we'd be trying to mount something right on the top of a point where we're not going to get anywhere with that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut uh, four sections of angle iron. One, two, three, four. So two for each pot. And then we're going to come back and we're going to look at how they're going to fit on the pots and maybe do a little bit of measuring up. And uh, at the same time, we'll cut these straps to size and uh, we'll start the assembly on that section. So there we go folks, that is four pieces of steel cut for the uprights on the baskets. So next what we need to do is figure out the dimensions of our clamping um, strip on the front and they're going to be secured with a set of toggle clamps. These are the ones that I've ordered. They're stainless steel, they have a 163 kilogram clamping capacity, so those tanks should be going nowhere. And the dimension that we're looking for, the important dimension, is this section in between here. 
we can, it says 5.2 there, but I'm not sure if that's correct or not. That's not a big distance. 5.2 millimeters is not much at all. But we'll work with that anyway. If we do it so the whole thing closes completely, you know, then uh, we can just take the slitting disc and notch it backwards to exactly where we want it. That's probably a better idea. So we'll go ahead and do that. So I noticed that uh, using these calculations that we had yesterday, to give us the diameter for the trays, the baskets, uh, the circumference of each basket was 14, 80 and 15, 90 respectively. So what we're going to do this time is uh, just shave a few millimetres off of each of those because they have some slop. I'll show you what I mean by shooting out here to where they're sat because I'm referring back to the pots and then back to the drawing board if you like to make sure I get this right. So you see how there's a gap around the edge. We want to try and eliminate that gap for this one so it grabs the brew kettle nice and tightly. You can see there's a considerable gap there and for the mash tun not so much. So this one I think we'll just be able to get away with eliminating basically nothing and this one will take at least 10 millimeters off and then uh, we want to make sure that this back strap doesn't change because it's going to be meeting with the verticals here and the front strap is the one that wants to have a bit of slop in it so we can get our tanks in and out without any problems so as I said We'll go ahead and we'll cut the mash tun at 1590. We'll keep that diameter there. And we'll just shave 10 mil off the boil kettle diameter and we'll run it at 1470. And the steel that we're gonna use for these straps is this three by 50 uh, stainless steel. And it seems flexible enough for the job. I was gonna use the same strap in that I'd used on the big brew tanks out there. You see what's going around that bit there, but I think that's a little bit too thin. So we'll give this a whirl instead. It'll hold its shape much better, I'm sure. So here I have the two sheets or strips of steel. And we're just gonna run through the roller mill and shape them. Now I appreciate not everybody has got a roller mill, but this three mil steel at a push could be bent by hand. So, if you're doing this out there, even the stuff that we did yesterday for the cradles, you could do that by hand, in a vice, just being quite patient. But, we have the tools, so why not indeed go for it and, uh, and utilise them. So, let's cut to a time lapse and let's get these babies rolled up. So you may have noticed there that I had to incorporate a couple of uh, twists because obviously it started to run out of centre which is something I can't really control on these rollers because I'm not skilled enough with them. I don't know exactly the techniques that I'd need to employ. But all I've done is just basically as they come through I just tweak them over a little bit and it seems to work. So what I'd actually like to do with this as well is over roll it a bit so the ends overlap meaning that I'm going to have a tight enough radius on the back of the pot without expanding out sideways too much but uh, we'll have a couple of dry fits first and then if I need to I'll come back and I'll put them through the rollers once more. So this section is one of my favourite parts of any build when the cut steel changes from something two dimensional to something three dimensional so what I've done is taken the rings that we've just rolled and I've brought in the bottom of the, what have I been calling them, carriages, uh, 
something like that. Anyway, uh, so I brought the bottom of these baskets in, whatever they are, and uh, I've sat the steel into it with the correct orientation. So I want this bottom ring to have the cut section at the back, the joint at the back, so we don't see that from the front of the brew stand. And then of course we're going to have to have the cut section at the front for this part because this is where the toggle clamp is going to reside. So what I've done is line it up so the centre of this cut is in line with the centre of this particular brace bar in the middle here. In fact if I just try and give you a shot you'll see that that's lined up with this centre bar that runs up here. I've done the same on this one but because this was a tighter ring we've got a little bit of overroll on there. I'm not going to chop it off though just in case I could cut it off afterwards it'd be a pain in the ass to add it back on so that can stay for now. But let me just set you back down again. But the idea of this is we want to be able to position our uprights on either side of the tank and they're going to sit like this and uh, I want to make sure that this middle piece isn't twisted or out of kilter with the rest so if we line them all up on the base I identify exactly where the centre is on the bottom ring then we'll just transpose the marks to the outside of this ring and then when we lift it up and weld it onto the top section of the uprights we know then that we're going to be directly above the ring and the pot will sit perfectly in the centre. That is the plan. Wish me luck. I'm not going to do this on camera because there's going to be a lot of swearing and fiddling and what have you. But it's very simple. Line it up. Find your centre line at a right angle. I've probably just put something like the square on there and then we'll go off that but I want to make sure that this pot is hung smack bang in the middle well there is part one of the cradle that's what we've been calling it the cradle so that nips up nicely on the front so when we get that clasp thing on there and it can over tighten as well if I need it to that looks pretty promising the only thing that's a little bit wobbly is the base, but when you pull the sides in, that wobble disappears. So I think what's happened is when I put the welds in at the bottom, it's just slightly flared out, because you can see it's really opened that gap. But if anything, that's going to allow me to put the pots in, and also when we've got the weight bed on here, it's going to come down and in anyway. So I imagine that'll be the natural movement of the whole thing. Let's just hope I can replicate the exact same thing with the mash tun one, which I'll be doing next. But it's starting to take shape now. So I've set the second one up with a couple of clamps on the side. And what I've done, I've just buzzed around the edge to make sure that it's the same height all the way around. And we've made sure that this back section is just on the inside of here because we want that to be already up to the pot and it's the front that we want to be pulling forwards. So as long as we're in position, we've got um, 90 degrees on these bottom sections here. We can take it over to the welding bench and we can start to tack it up. So to keep it as simple as possible, all I'm gonna do is just flow a little bit of the top edges here. So that weld hasn't penetrated too deep, but it's just enough to hold everything in position. Then that will allow me to remove the clamps. I've extended the post flow as well to five seconds on the TIG welder just to prevent any discoloration because we want this when it's finished to look as nice as possible. So that's that off of there. Then all I'm gonna do is just flip it onto its side 
and that looks tight enough to be able to be tacked up without a clamp on it. I had to use a clamp on the last one. And I'm not running all of these welds out in case I have to move anything. I'll come back and I'll weld it all up afterwards. I just want to make sure that it's not going to fall apart while we're doing the dry fit. And I think that will be sufficient. So let's go and try the mash tun in it. Right, I've taken a few components like the manometer off the front of the uh, mash tub. I might just place this on the floor so I'm not breaking my back lifting the whole damn thing. And we'll go ahead and see exactly how she fits. So we've got to tip the fittings in first. Oh, I think we made it. There we are. That looks nice and tight around the back. I think that's going to be a good fit once we get that uh, nipped up. Oh, that's going to look grand, that is. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that fit up on there. Zoom in and get a bit of a closer look. So as I say, that, that closes up nicely on the front of the tank. And then around the back, you can see that the band is nice and firm up against there. So when it's grabbing it, it is grabbing it all the way around. Right, time to move on to the next step, which is going to be the solid bar mounts. So I've just spent quite a bit of time with the grinder, just uh, notching out the tops of these bars to accommodate a piece of one inch uh, hygienic pipe. This is stainless steel pipe that I've used in the main brewery. And we just chopped uh, a section out of the top and then I pressed it around this piece of uh, 25 millimeter rod that I've got. We just got uh, a short length of this to make these particular um, carriers. This is gonna be the bearing, if you like, the bearing surface. And uh, yeah, as you can see, the diameter wasn't quite right. So I just put it in the vise and pressed it on. And then that means that we've got this nice little section here, which comes away and we can sit that kind of, let me just put this down. We can sit that kind of in there, about like that. And then that means we can then drop the uh, bar in and the bar will be welded to the cradles and then that's what they're going to pivot on so I've just done all three of these in the correct order so um, two of them face that way if you know what I mean two of them are left handed if you like and one of them is right handed and the outside cradle carriers are about that size about an inch you know I've just done it with about half an inch quarter of an inch you know 12 mil 10 mil stick out past the edge of the uh, past the edge of the bar itself like that you can see that and I'm doing this off camera I'm doing a terrible job and then the central one which is carrying two uh, cradles essentially I've made it so it sticks out a little bit on both sides like that so we're going to just tack these in place now and see exactly how they look and uh, also start making the cradle carrier section for the edge of here. So that's effectively just going to be a chunk of this bar welded on there like that with just enough sticking out to sit in these carriers. Uh, so let's have a play with that. Oh and also this section has to house the tilt mechanism so we're going to have to cut 
this section out of a piece of steel that I've got just sat on the side here. I forget how wide that was. Just, just chuck a tape on it. So this is 5 mil by 75 mil, and I think we'll be able to cut out a nice little section to uh, to drill the holes where we need to. So what I've decided to do is uh, just weld these cradle carriers on top of this section, and I'm halfway through the weld, and somebody's rocked up to tell me I'm doing it all wrong. What was you saying, buddy? Doing it all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it wrong, have I, mate? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, I'll just get grinder out. I would, yeah. Get it all ground off again. Take it all back to pieces. Back to pieces. I surprised him. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> nice visit there from Thomas. So, uh, cheers, bud. You've put me back two and a half hours. Never mind. <laughs> So what we're going to do is uh, continue making these little uh, cradle carriers and that one is pretty much finished. That's going to go there and hold these two sections of the cradle up. Then we're going to have obviously one for either end. And what is doing the supporting on those cradle carriers is a piece of this wonderful one inch bar stock. So I'm going to go ahead and put you in the tripod and we're going to chop a piece off now and we're going to eyeball it folks oh yes so let's get the camera down and on the end we'll see how close we can get this to come off I'll try and lock the focus so it doesn't change and then we'll uh, We'll zip this off by eye. Wish me luck, folks. How's that? Not too bad, not too shabby. So let's go ahead and weld this onto the carriers. Or well, actually onto the cradles. I must have had quite a proud moment there, folks. Look, no strings attached. So we've just got it sat in through friction fit and it's holding its position. These two tabs are just tacked on and uh, apart from just squaring everything up a little bit, which we can't do until we get the main frame built, that's looking really, really nice. So let's uh, rinse and repeat. So here they are, roughly assembled, both cradles on their respective hangers. And as you can see, we pivot and there's enough friction for the whole arm to stay on there, which is exactly what we're looking for. Needs a little bit of cleaning up to square everything, but once it's all in position, and once it's all fully welded, I can go around and we can make a little bit of space, you know, for a little bit of lubrication where required within the uh, mating surfaces of the mechanism. So I'm going to take all this off now. Beautiful, beautiful. And uh, I'm going to take these across to the bench and we're going to weld everything up so they're rock solid.
think I was recording most of that uh, weld up, but I reckon the battery died, so you got what you got, unfortunately. But we've finished both of the cradles, and uh, just at the end there, some of the welds started to get a little bit black because, uh, well, that's it. I have emptied my argon bottle. There is none left in there. So I'm gonna have to go and pick up another argon tomorrow or send Stuart to do it if, uh, if he's got time while I do some cutting of steel. So this one should have cooled down by now. Feels like it. And that is basically it. That's the cradle welded up. So let me grab a tape measure and I'll run across all the dimensions for anybody who's interested. Okay, so the bottom bar is 20mm uh, by 5mm steel, the side is 30mm by 5mm steel, the hoop. The top hoop is 50mm um, by 3, that, sorry that one's by 3 as well, they're by 5, that's by 3, that's by 3. The angle iron is 30 by 30 by 3. The uh, bar is 25 mil and uh, the pipe that we cut was one inch um, what's it called hygienic pipe but quite frankly I might go for something different than that maybe some tube it's because I had it in stock I thought I could wing it and if it didn't work I would have ordered some proper tube but the wall is a little bit thin on that it should last though and then of course over here we've got 75 by 3 this is going to be used to make some plates and uh, some other bits and bobs like the triangle brackets that will hold this whole thing up which you will see on the next version but it is as you can see on the clock there Mr Beadle is telling us it's five past seven I really should go home so all that's left for me to do is one fantastic thumbnail shot for, hold on, let's put both the cages in. I need to do a thumbnail, you see, for the video. Anyway, you'll see the thumbnail shot at the start of the video. You've already seen it. Well, that's what I'm going to do now before I go on the very last thing. And we'll pick up tomorrow's vlog when I've got some argon. We do have a meeting with the accountant, that means I'm going to have to do that first before I can do any welding. And I also need to pick up some argon, so tomorrow might not be a massive uh, episode where we don't get too much done, I don't suppose. And then on Thursday I'm off over to see Tom to help him wire up his control panel, I was going to say brew panel. I'm going to wire up his key until it's 7 o'clock. He's going to wire up his control panel for his SS Brewtech kit and hopefully he'll be brewing in a couple of weeks time as will we. We'll see you on the next one folks. Thanks for tuning in. Ciao.